In the previous tutorial, we established a foundational understanding of Django's multi-table setup by organizing our project into distinct apps. So within Django, it's possible to specify the database configuration at both the app and model level, just emphasizing the complexity of this subject matter. Multi-database setups in Django really demands its own section within this course where we can delve much deeper, both into creating a multi-database setup and the migration process. So as we delve into the migration process within this module, I wanted to make sure that we did cover at least the basics of multi-database app setup migration. So our aim here is to impart some of the fundamental principles rather than cover every aspect of the migration with multi-database setups. If you haven't seen the previous tutorial and you are new to multi-database setups, do watch that first and come back where we were then in this tutorial, discuss migrating in multi-database app setups. This is part two of three of this mini series, migrating in a multi-database app setup. Now let's remember here the previous tutorial, we took the first steps of moving towards a multi-database setup. And that's really the key here and my angle. We're just moving in towards that. And I want to give you some general pointers along the way. So the first key learning point is to remember that when you migrate with Django, the migrations are applied to one database at a time. So Django's migration system operates on a per database basis, meaning that migrations are executed independently for each database connection defined in your Django settings. Now you may have a multi-database setup and you want to migrate to both tables um, in the same migration script, if you like. So when we run migrations, what we can do, we can automate the running migrations for multiple databases in Django by creating a custom management command, for example, or script. So we can create a custom management command, which will migrate to um, the first database. And then once that's finished, it can then switch to the other database and migrate into that database. Okay, so the second point here is that really to master this process is to master the test database routers. So using database routers will allow you to have that fine grained control over migrations and how they are applied, how they are applied, sorry, to multiple databases in your Django projects. Ultimately, this will ensure the consistency and flexibility in managing database schemas. Now, there isn't too much information out there um, regards to mastering or using the database router. Of course, this is going to be a case of working through all the Django documentation and then really thinking and designing the setup. And of course, having a robust test setup for your database routers will be critical in, at this stage. Now, if there was one piece of advice I would give you if you're moving into the world of multi-database setups is to think about now migrations from the app database perspective. So whenever you run migrations or migrate, always do that by specifying the app and the database. Now, I will show you potentially why that is with the small setup we created in the previous tutorial. You will find there are some certain quirks uh, that Django will have if you don't start thinking about uh, migrations from an app database perspective when working with multiple databases. Now, of course, our example is not the most robust example, but it does give you uh, some things to think about and really kind of makes this point clearer as to why you want to, when you now make migrations, to really think about specifying apps and databases in this process. The rest of this tutorial, we're going to explore the code that we created in the previous tutorial, run a few migrations, and have a look at some of the different behaviors with the current database setup here. So let's take a look at the database setup. Now, what we have done in our code is we removed the settings from the default. Now, Django is always going to look for the default settings when we run migrations. We did already see an example of this in the previous tutorial where we run the migrate command and then we experienced uh, this issue here, the fact that we didn't supply an engine value. So that's simply because what's happened here is that Django cycled through all of our routers that we've defined. It hasn't found a database 
uh, to apply and so therefore it's reverted back to the default um, settings where it's looking for an engine an actual database to apply this to so if we were indeed to actually put the settings here back in default and let's run this once again you can see this time it actually tries to apply the migrations of course it's found a database in the default settings and it has now applied it to that in this current setup we have in fact created two new routers and we blanked the default router so what's happening when we run the migrate process in this current setup first of all django inspects the default router that we've created and then it goes off and inspects the inventory router and then it's hitting that default router which is currently empty now key to this process of determining whether an application or indeed um, a table now that's something we haven't mentioned so far the fact that we can apply migrations per application or potentially per model now we're focusing here on per app we won't go into per model at this point but it's worth noting that that is possible so just to mention that again so so far we've been discussing migrations uh, with multiple databases per application or been defining per application but you can in addition to that also specify per model in terms of where that model needs to be migrated which database so here with this router this is our default router so what's key here is the for us to focus on the allow migrate method which is part of the django uh, database router class so this method is responsible for determining whether a particular app's models should be migrated on a specific database essentially what we've done within our router here is that we've assigned these apps to this database setup the django db now when we run migrate like we saw previously uh, at the moment i've just reverted back to the blank um, default router we can see that um, django isn't applying those migrations even though this is ready to be migrated because these apps are being assigned to the django db and in actual fact we haven't actually specified the django db so that's not actually being matched so we have the db being passed in here so what that is is a value of course uh, which we've learned previously the fact that we can specify here in the migrate command a database so let's specify django db and of course what's happening here when the migrate command now is running it's moving through this router and it's passing in the database here and we're making a match so by making that match we've now determined um, that yep when we migrate now that's the database we are migrating to in this operation and these are the apps that should be migrated to that database a match is made so therefore django migrates the tables from these apps to the database that we specified now of course there needs to be a corresponding engine uh, in our database configuration of course there is and therefore the migration takes place now we do have a secondary router here and we have assigned the inventory app label to the inventory db now what's happening here then let's imagine we were running the migrate command now obviously at this point we don't actually have an engine to migrate so that isn't necessarily the problem so let's go for the database and that was the django db so we'll pass that in now django db will get passed into here and obviously what's going to happen that database doesn't match the database that corresponds to the apps database therefore we return false and therefore if there is an inventory app label in the migration uh, process that's taken place then that isn't going to be migrated so return false means it's not going to be migrated in this case to the django db now that isn't necessarily the end of the story so let me just show you a certain behavior here right so we're going to go ahead and migrate database uh, django db right so just to let you know that we do have a migration ready for inventory it hasn't been migrated okay so we have a migration ready for uh, the inventory it's not been migrated yet but we've got that set up and we're going to go ahead and just migrate the initial migration for the django default apps into the django db database right so we're going to quickly need to bring that up i think we'll just start the database containers that's always helpful and then we go ahead and run the command again so we have migrated but notice what's happened here 
if we inspect um, what's happened, because we have a migration set somewhere, in this case, the inventory, you can see that Django's picked that up. And it says here that the inventory uh, table potentially has been um, migrated, which is interesting because we are specifically here defining in our inventory reader that if we do have a lap app label inventory, then we're not going to be migrating to that table unless the table um, or the database, sorry, is inventory DB. Now, if we inspect the actual tables that were migrated, we can see in actual fact the inventory table wasn't, or the inventory table, sorry, they were not migrated to the database. However, if we inspect the uh, migrations here, the Django migrations, and then select the data, you can see that in actual fact, it has recorded the fact that the inventory um, models have been migrated. And of course, they haven't. If we were to inspect the inventory uh, database, in actual fact, they were not migrated to the inventory database. So that's just something that you need to be careful of if you have a, a basic setup that you're running with and you are running migrations. And this is why I mentioned the third point of uh, things to consider. Uh, when you start to make migrations in a multi-database setup, to think of the migrations from an app database perspective. So let me just reset everything. So to overcome this, I would be thinking about potentially, first of all, creating the migrations for the default apps um, individually before making any migrations to any other app. So that way we can ensure that all the migrations for those uh, initial built-in apps are migrated first. And then, like I said, from that point on, think of everything from an app database perspective. So if we were to um, think about the migration in that process or that in that way, if we were to specify the actual app and then the database, in this case, we're going to migrate the initial admin database that will get migrated. And of course, this time it would not be looking for the migrations in the inventory. So therefore, we wouldn't be applying any other migrations um, that shouldn't be applied in the um, corresponding databases. So that would just ensure that we don't have that erroneous um, migration history in the incorrect databases. Now, this is a difficult subject to teach because there are so many different variables and different setups, etc. So I do hope that um, if you are taking your first steps, you can utilize this knowledge um, along your way. And I wish you all the best with your setup. So in the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at overriding the management commands, which is always not necessarily recommended. But uh, considering the fact that we're now working with this app uh, database approach, maybe we need to make sure that we are actually applying that. And just in case we forget, let's uh, build or override the management command so that we can enforce the fact that when we migrate, that we have to specify an app and a database.